find it amazing how Meredith. feminists all, I mean, yes, obviously their, their prime thing is um, opposing misogyny. And I mean, that's a completely valid thing to do. Um, but I found so much misogyny in feminism. I mean, like that, that idea right there where, you know, they start off saying, you know, women are powerful, women are strong, they can do this, they can do, you know, anything that a man can do, great. And yet they're doing so much to protect women. Like there are these, like you were saying, delicate little flowers that, you know, they go into the workplace and God forbid somebody says the wrong word and, oh, you know, their whole day is just shot, Life. you know, and, yeah. you know, they've fallen into a deep depression mm -hmm. and, you know, like that's not an empowering image of women at all and it's completely contradictory. Yeah, it's, well, I, I remember reading from the Good Men Project, which is essentially a feminist publication. Um, the the writer, I cannot get for the life of me remember his name, I apologize, but he wrote, um, he, he was the one who wrote about teaching boys that they're rapists or not to rape as feminists. You know, oh, like that the, whole thing. The oh male gosh. feminist article? No, well, they, that the, all boys are rapists? Or, or not, no, that they needed to be taught not to rape, that she needed to teach boys not to rape. Okay. And she was saying, like, is there is there a word for uh, for saying don't rape anyone, asshole? And he's talking about talking to, like, his, his boy, his, his son. That's awful. And, and uh, of course, he just said, well, we, we can't say that, so we just say soften, boys. But then he goes into the spiel where he says, well, no matter how strong a woman you, you make your daughters, she's still a fragile vessel who could shatter into a myriad, million ear, ear, uh, uh, unfixable pieces at, at the brutish actions of any man. And, and it's yeah. like... Uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, my my father never taught me that. Yeah. No. You know, no. it's like strap it back on and you know, keep going. You yeah. know, it's it's like and I, I can't imagine how that is empowering to think that to think that things can shatter you because it really strength is about dealing with life as it is, not expecting other people to pad the world for you. You know, and it's even it, it even feels uncomfortable when guys do that when they pad the world for you. And it, and, it, like, and it almost creates a cage of that padding. You know, you can't exit yeah. it because you're so sensitive now that the moment you exit it, you're in trouble. You're, you're unable to cope. So now you're stuck in these little harems. <laughs> you're stuck, yeah. You're, you really are stuck. You're, you're trapped in this because, uh, you know, they, they say that they really are trying to empower women, but they're not. They're making it worse. It, it is like she said, they are they are padding everything. They are making it, they're making women feel more comfortable being easily offended, being, you know, just shattered by the littlest thing. Yeah, being afraid. Yes, very, I mean, it's, they're afraid everywhere they go that someone out there is just waiting in the bushes to rape them or something. And that's just not true. The statistics don't back that. It, it's. I've encountered too many people lately that are making these broad statements of all women. All women are afraid. All women fear this. All, you know, women are afraid of walking down the street. And I'm reading this going, last I checked, I'm a woman and I'm not afraid. So, I mean, for one, you don't get to speak for me, but, you know, how is that empowering? How is it empowering to instill this sense of fear in everyone, especially when that's not indicative of reality at all? It, it's not empowering. It's not empowering the least. And, and when you uh, brought up the uh, the dark side of the female, kind of like the female shadow, when that's not addressed again, also like the uh, the um, female criminals, which are hidden in our society, are not really addressed as much or, or given a lower you know sentence or, and things like that. When we don't discuss that, you know, people have this ability to go to the dark side. When we don't address that, and we just say. Oh, it's just men. I mean, when they say things like that, they say uh, like that. You see the quotes often. All too many men are rapists. Stuff like that. Too many men are like that. Uh, what they're saying is where that basis is coming from is their view that men are criminal innately. They're criminal. So that's misandry. But somehow they twist that into misogyny. I, I don't know how is. they've been. Yeah, they, they go into, uh, you know, too many men are like that because misogyny. No, you have that view because of misandry. <laughs> like, what are you talking about right now? You know? So it's, yeah, it's, it's incredible. And 
and telling women that they, you know, that um, not to acknowledge your shadow, not to be conscious of, wait, I might be overstepping this man's boundaries. Wait, I might be hurting this man. Uh, it, it excuses them and lets them just continue on. And that's actually a really dangerous slippery slide and can, you know, support them in being abusive towards men. Uh, instead, the conversation should be, here. The, here's the reality, you know, how do you treat the person before you? How do you treat yourself? Because it does come back to how do you treat yourself? If women are told to live in fear, that's what they're going to project is more fear. They're going to feel too afraid and therefore they're not going to feel safe within their own boundaries. They're not going to feel safe to say, these are my boundaries. This is where I feel safe within myself. So they're going to project that into men and saying, because what's happening is they're afraid, they don't feel safe within themselves, they don't feel safe within their boundaries, so all of a sudden, the world is scary. Men are the ones who are doing it to them. That's, yeah. that's where that comes from. Instead of saying, holy crap, you know what, no, I'm a powerful human being, I'm, I'm capable of creating my own boundaries, I'm capable of having healthy discourse with men, having healthy relationships with men, coexisting healthily together, supporting one another. You know, but when we continue to, uh, dismiss the female shadow we're not supporting women we're not helping women be stronger yeah. we're we're supporting women staying in fear in terror and that's that's not healthy that's not healthy for any part of humanity and until that shift is supported then we're not how are we going to move forward we're just not it's, yeah. it's not possible i wanted to add to that um when women expect men to maintain their boundaries they are always going to live in fear because they don't realize that they're you're you're abdicating your control right mm -hmm. you're and, and you you're saying that you can do whatever it's your choice but i'm somehow i'm gonna manifest vulnerability and you're gonna not do it or something mm -hmm. you know and it's like no you, you establish your boundaries and you do what you need to be done to to have them respected and um you know, have a sense of humor about it too, maybe. Right. <laughs> I think they, I think they often say that uh, what we do is is hatred against women. I don't think that's the case at all. I think it, I think what we stand for is that women are strong enough to handle whatever is thrown at them, and they are capable of handling it like adults. They're capable of getting better. I mean, you can be, you know, you could be raped, you could, you know, be suicidal. You could have, you could be abused your entire life, but you, it's up to you to decide what happens next. You can live your life in fear. You can internalize this. You can be a victim all of your life, or you can learn from what happened and get better and just learn to not hold that against every other person in your life, mm -hmm. to not blame every man or every person who wronged you. Right, and it's, it's important, like, you know, the men's human rights movement, because you're having the discussion of, hey, this is happening to men as well. This isn't something that's just happening to women. So it can help, uh, you know, create that reality that, wow, we are all people. You know, it's not just happening to women, this is happening to men too. And we need to fix that together. But, um, you know, feminism doesn't do that. It, it continues to divide men and women. It, it doesn't, you know, it says, you should be afraid of this person and you should, you know, you're, you're the criminal, men are criminals, and women should be afraid. That, that's, not, that, that's not a healthy human community reality in, in any sense. Of the They're limiting our interactions with other people, things that, that we can do as women if we, we live in fear. If we have this irrational fear of, of men, of, of violence that could, that'll uh, be perpetuated against us if we walk outside of our doors, that's probably more damaging than anything that the feminists are saying is happening in the workplace. I mean, if you if you if you walk outside every single day just afraid to live, that is worse than anything that someone might say to you or do. Yeah, right. right. It, it ruins every day of your life. Yeah. It does. You know, and it's uh, well, I mean, I, I use a I use an example. Um, let's say you had an old aunt. You know, she's living by herself in, in a house and and she keeps getting harassed by a, a shady uh, home alarm salesman who's constantly telling her all of these scary stories about statistics about crime in her area that are inflated or even outright lies. Now, in that scenario, you see the abuse immediately. But why don't we see the abuse when it's feminists and government doing it to women? 
-hmm. you know it's it, it's abusive to women yeah to, to inflate these statistics yeah. um I, I remember actually to, to deny the, the both sides of the reality i remember uh the day it clicked in my mind and i realized that i i, I studied the statistics on male sexual abuse for so long um so I, I, I knew pretty much the state of the art in, in, the, in the, the field. And I also knew that the majority of male uh, rapists had themselves been abused, usually by adult females, um, mostly in their teens or even younger. And I, I had been, before then, I, I hadn't even noticed that I had been carrying this burden of fear. But then one day it just sort of clicked in my mind. It's like that piece of... I guess it would have been agitating in my mind and then the, finally the, it just shifted and it clicked in place. And I realized that we, we were all in it together. And, and that, that huge weight of fear of men just lifted off because they weren't this, this, um, this other, this dangerous other. They were actually victims with me or potential victims with me. So we were all in it, in it together against, not, I wouldn't even say the people who rape, but whatever's in those people that's making them engage in these, these acting out in these aggressive sexual ways, you know? And it's like, it was like a moment in that, I remember distinctly, it's just like this weight lifted off me and it, it, was, it was actually pretty transcendent. It's like, whew, I felt like, oh, I could breathe. And men were no longer my enemy. And it was, it was because I had followed these men's issues down the rabbit hole and I had looked at the statistics and now the statistics are coming out more and more that the rape of men is much, far more prevalent than we ever could have imagined before. I mean, just the, in 2012 they did a survey and this is a national crime victimization survey. So it requires a male victim to identify what happened to him as rape, which is difficult for male victims to do because we live in a society that says men can't be raped. Um, and 38% of the victims of rape were found to be men in, on a national crime victimization survey, which required the, them to say, yeah, I was a victim of rape. And, 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 and if you look at other statistics, I mean, they're coming out now in like almost like an avalanche that this is a big problem that men face too. It's not, sexual violence is not gendered at all. It's yeah. not men doing it to women. It's, it's abusive people doing it to their victims. Yeah. You know, and, and the other thing is that when you, when you digest all this, you realize that um, the sexual violence itself is, is, is almost like, like what I said is that it's not necessarily us against against the people engaging it, but whatever is in them that makes them engage in it, whatever this toxic dynamic that they're perpetuating. So it it, it, it was interesting. It was like weight lifted off me, yeah. and I could uh, I could get let go of that kind of. I think it was a toxic victimhood yeah. that I was carrying around, and. And that, that's one, one of the good things that the men's rights movement has done for me, yeah. definitely.